breakfast with Anne and Mark. Shall we take a look at today's front pages? Yes, Sunday papers. Observer, reporting on concerns of some senior Tory members, uh, believing that any failure of Liz Trust to address the cost of living crisis could lead to a substantial loss of party members, let alone, of course, maybe losing the government. Uh, the picture there showing the amount of leaves that have fallen on the ground today, I think this is in Tottenham. And uh, clearly it's happening across the country. It looks like autumn already and yeah. yet it's August. The Sunday Mirror leads with the headline Wasteminster. It reports that more than a thousand tonnes of subsidised food has been discarded at the Palace of Westminster. Slightly unfair showing Boris Johnson there tucking into something. I bet he doesn't waste his food. Uh, no, no, nothing wasted there. Uh, Sunday Telegraph reporting that Liz Truss, uh, meanwhile, has vowed, as he said, to halt NHS doctor exodus as the healthcare crisis continues. Pension is actually part of that uh, problem with doctors. And the front page of the Sunday Times reports that university bosses are arguing for a higher, yes, a higher tuition fee. Difficulties, they say. You, they say UK students a year for a, a year. A year. Currently, of course, the annual tuition fee is nine thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. But they're saying the universities are saying they need you to pay much more, like what they charge foreign students, and then charge you six point six interest. Yeah, and month and month. move that goalpost yeah. of interest yeah. as and when they want. Oh, horrendous. Time to, go for, yeah. Time to go through these papers now. Joining us this morning, Fraser Myers, Deputy Editor of Spiked, and Emma Burnell, playwright and journalist. And good morning to both morning, of you. Yes. Good morning. So where are we starting, Fraser, with the crisis in the NHS uh, covered by the Telegraph? <laughs> the ongoing crisis in, in the NHS. Um, one of the big problems, one of the main big problems facing the NHS at the moment is that doctors are retiring early. And it's estimated that around 7 in 10 doctors are essentially pushed into retirement by the way their pension works. So there's a kind of cap on their pensions. So when it gets to over a million pounds, after that they get punished essentially for taking on more work. 55% tax. Exactly. Yeah, so you can... Allowance. The, so the incentive then is for you know, doctors to take early retirement, which is, you know, that might be nice for them, but also when... It's a crazy matter. It's, it's, it's kind of a crazy, it's a crazy incentive. Scheme, yeah, it's, it's, a yeah. Crazy, it's a crazy if scheme. If she removes it, though, for the doctors, surely she's got to do it for everyone else. You can't make doctors a special case, can you? Uh, no, you're right. And, you know, this is obviously, you know, it, it all sounds like a nice solution, but then uh, when you're talking about people's pensions, you know, maybe some people do like to retire early, of course. I think people yes, but, pick up a bit of fun. but Liz Truss is saying that the, one of the ways to uh, to solve the NHS problems at the moment, particularly the backlog mm. after the pandemic, is to encourage uh, older doctors yes. back into the service. Yeah. Uh, you can't if you're going to penalise them at the same time. Exactly, and one of the other things that they've identified is the fact that there is a lot of kind of red tape in getting older doctors back into the service, as well as this pension problem. Mm. They have to do a lot of extra training, a lot of it really not really related to healthcare. So one of the things you have to show is that you've done your prevent de-radicalisation training. I don't know whether that's really well, necessary for doctors. But yeah, here's uh, an, another um, issue that the, the Telegraph has touched on with this, and that is that senior consultants and the highest earners automatically pay 14.5% of their earnings into their pension pot. Mm. So clearly they're going to hit that lifetime allowance pretty damn quickly pretty quickly and, and and many of these people aren't allowed to opt out as well yeah. so clearly there is um something to be done there although you know the crisis in the nhs is now getting so vast that it's hard to see that this one it needs a whole restructuring it, it, exactly. but who is going to be brave enough to do that only what 18 months before we start talking about a general election you know and we're already hearing from um, <clears throat> the nhs that they're going to you know roll out a covid style campaign to warn people not to come to a and e don't see your doctor unless it's serious you can't see your gp don't see a doctor unless it's serious yeah. don't go to a and e oh, unless what the hell are those for exactly. apparently yeah. which is another oh, yes. odd thing that they've suddenly sort of thrown out there now your doctor can prescribe you lower bills which <laughs> sounds great but feels very much like oh my god we've already got a postcode lottery and everything else can we not have it in our energy well bills? we've also <laughs> got doctors then they're going to try and provide food for some of their patients coming like, like a, a, a food bank well this office. is it we're now seeing the nhs uh, a massive massive fan of the nhs and all that they do but all that they already do is struggling mm. we cannot keep adding new um new responsibilities and new expectations on an already massively struggling service my question around the pensions thing is why does this rule exist in the first place my instinct 
it's not backed up by any evidence, I have to say, is that there may have been a question around um, deteriorating skills from doctors as they got older yeah. and harder and harder to justify keeping them in the service. So it was felt Making way for young blood. Making way for younger trained. skills, yeah. younger blood. So I do think there probably needs to be questions asked around is simply going towards the older end. I mean, I'm, as I get older, I'm more and more aware that my skills are not as sharp as they may once have been. Here, here's, here's another question on the, the wider pension issue. Why do you have a lifetime allowance when everything that you build up in your pension pot, and, you know, if you've got a good pension company, they obviously yeah. will, will boost that, you're going to pay income tax as soon as you start taking that well, pension that, out. That, that so you seem, are taxed yeah. anyway. Why, why it's caps, I don't know. I'm guessing because if it weren't, the... the, the payments that come in from the Treasury would be uh, considered exorbitant and un unfeasible by the government. So the matched payment from the, the pensions they, we're there would be the problem, is my guess. Well, look, while we're talking about finances and massive oh, yeah. problems, yeah. Emma, take us to the cost of tertiary so study. Yeah, what the universities want to charge now for a degree. I mean... I went back to university to do my master's degree a few years ago oh. and it was incredible and it was but what was really interesting to me was the difference it felt between when I did my first degree when it was free to do mm. and doing my master's degree 20 years later um, <clears throat> when I paid for it and I was a consumer not a student yeah. I behaved so differently and I think that that is the um, what universities aren't thinking about. Did if you they, get value for money? I, I mean, I got a distinction in my journalism. Oh, well, OK. So I feel like I did very well. Um, and yes, actually, I had okay. incredible tutors and it was a, a really great experience. But um, if you were asking me now to pay, I have not got a, a, a desk job based on that degree. Um, I have increased my own skills, my own confidence in what I'm able to do, but I don't feel like I would have got um, £24,000 a year's worth out no. of that degree. And th this is just for the tuition? And that's this just, is without yeah. the cost of, of, of living cost. expenses and, and the rest of it? And I just feel like universities need to be much more aware that the more they push people into being consumers rather than students, the more all the other things that they complain about student behaviour in is going to increase because actually why wouldn't a student kick back on their experience when actually they don't feel that they're getting what they are paying vast, but vast the universities are, are bleating on about how hard up they are and how yeah. difficult it is to provide a service but I know that there have been recent stories about um, chancellors paying themselves an absolute fortune the, the people at the top of the university kind of uh, pile are yeah re uh, enormous remuneration because they are businesses now mm. so they want they want the salaries of business executives and you know because it is that kind of consumption thing it's not treated as a public service in the way that it and used it's to be and, and it's international yeah. exactly and it's all about all attracting students so they spend all this money on huge building projects loads of fancy new buildings but you know there's never that much money to pay the lecturers at and the we're end losing the things that make our university system so important and so unique we're losing so much of that focus on research mm. and you know the kind of research that doesn't have a commercial application we don't think at the moment it may well do lots and lots of research that originally considered didn't have a commercial application is actually at the basis of a great deal of our, our most successful companies but we need to get back to that sense of knowledge for its own sake of really investing in exploring learning and exploring and thinking and being free to explore and learn and think rather than this kind of drill sergeant push it through a three-year very very regimented and come out with a piece of paper that's supposed to be worth a lot of money but, but yes. this push that the universities are saying we need, really need to charge 24 grand mm. to British students for a degree isn't realistic it's not going no. to wash is it no I don't it's just going to put kids off going to what they'll get yeah. is fewer fewer students and no more money well in fact I mean it's not just the time they just spotted the Sunday Telegraph university I want a refund why disgruntled students are mm. demanding their money back so yeah all over the papers right let's move on to the express Fraser you spotted more on the cost of living. Uh, the Prime Minister saying Brexit freedoms would bring more choice to all. 
They keep promising it, but... <laughs> is it, hold on, which Prime Minister is this? Oh, this, is, this is Boris. Right. Remember him? Uh, he's still there. Um, so this, <laughs> this is still in Greece. He's, uh, well, yes, yeah. exactly. He's still, he's still in, in office, uh, officially. Um, so this is the Trans-Pacific Partnership um, trade deal that will be coming down the line, potentially, at the end of the year. Um, so don't get too excited. It's not going <laughs> to cut your um, energy bill this year, it's not going to cut your food bill this year, but maybe over the future, you know, free trade usually has this effect of, of lowering prices. So it's no bad thing. It, it brings us into a kind of free trade partnership with countries like Japan, Canada, um, Singapore. Uh, it's what you know. So it's a kind of it's, it's one and, of these. And Boris is saying this, uh, and Liz Truss is backing him on this. Liz Truss is backing. I mean, Liz Truss, when she was um, you know trade minister, she was involved in the kind of the early stage negotiations of a lot of these things. Well, it's one of the she accused of cut and paste. Uh, she was. She was. Yeah. The deals were ready to go, and she just sort of took and, them off. And, and taking lots of photos. You know, she likes to be seen taking. Because the Jack hat and took photos. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like likes being seen around the world. So yeah, I'm not sure how much. Um, you know, personally, she should take any credit for this, but okay. um, but certainly it's something that she's um, backing politically. Um, so it will definitely be in place by the time we assume. We've got time for take one place. more look at the papers. Emma, take us to it. Princess Diana is suddenly on the front pages again, okay. and this is an alleged cover-up of things that went on leading to her death. I, I mean, it's it's an alleged cover-up by one person who is still milking their connection to Diana, what, 25 years yes. after her death? I just yeah. think... This is Lee, a former bodyguard, Lee Sansom, dubbed Rambo by Lady, or, or Princess Diana. Yeah, there's more. There's a lot about it in the papers today, about the fact that, once again, we discover that she predicted that one day she would, uh, she would die in a car accident that had been brought about by forces against her. Um, and in this case, this former bodyguard is saying what? That, 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 that maybe spies. That there were spies in the involved, tunnel in the tunnel. I mean, so what he's, happened he's, to he's Diana actually, was He's tragic. talking about the motorbikes, suggesting that the, the bikes were never found. That is no coincidence. But I mean, all, the, all the, the paparazzi were on bikes, weren't they? Yeah, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of photographs taken by the paparazzi. I mean, this is one of the most documented things. We don't tend to see them because we have better taste than to look, but they exist in the world. Um, Diana's death was tragic. I am no um, big fan of some of the excesses of GCHQ, but I think spending 22 years on this particular conspiracy theory is just sad for all of us, and sad for her and her family. And I just think, uh, oh yeah, I, I think move on. Yeah, well, I mean, it's th th this is all caused by a documentary that's going to come out on Channel 4, and it just seems to me that there's a documentary nearly every year about yeah. Princess Diana. Yeah, Manor, yeah. and I'm just surprised to see this story in the Star and not the Express. Which well, I think it's in the Express as well. Oh, it's in the Express as well. Yeah, so they, they, they've sort of gone inside with the Express, and other, but it sells newspapers. Still. It does. It does. It still yeah. does. I think, you know, it's a very significant uh, cultural figure. You know, if people talk about how. Um, the Diana funeral changed Britain, made us a more, you know, emotional the country. The people's princess yeah. made us less uptight. Um, so, you know, she obviously a hugely significant figure, so I'm not surprised that people are still no. talking about it. Will you come back in an hour and do some more papers with us? Absolutely. We Thank you very much. We're going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk amongst ourselves. <laughs>